This works without fail every single time and it literally transformed my life in ways that I didn't even think was ever going to happen at a point where I even doubted if it could ever be transformed. That's how miraculous this was. Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be talking about curses, what they are, how you know you have a curse on you, and the most important part, I'm gonna give you three of my favorite ways to break them, and I have used all three of them, and I'll give you a little bit of my own story and experience with each. Now let me go ahead and explain to you exactly what a curse or a hex is. A curse is evil intention that is thrown your way, that is there to serve misfortune over your life. Sometimes it can be something someone said, or if someone is cursing you out and they have they're pointing their finger at you but it's the intention behind it if they are throwing bad juju your way or actually going so far as to do a spell in order to make bad things happen to you that is what a curse is and it can be something again as elaborate as them doing a full-blown ritual or it could be something as simple as them being like go to hell or you're never gonna find love in your life or you get what exactly what it is that you deserve and the thing is is that anything could really be a curse because it's pretty much the words that someone says and the thoughts that they're thinking as they're projecting them out towards you it can block blessings it can bring bad luck misfortune it can make things in your life backfire you can find yourself being such a good person but it doesn't seem to matter because all of these bad things keep happening and you can't explain it there's really no explanation for it the other thing is that with curses is that maybe it wasn't directed at you maybe it was directed at your family or a family member from a gen generation that had already passed this is something that I actually experienced in my life within my family that we we knew that we had bad luck in one area of our lives. We had intuitively known that there was something kind of evil or bad following us with that. It kept getting passed on from generation to generation and then it was confirmed a little later on through psychic reading that we had done for each other and then also from outside psychics that were saying the same thing and seeing the same thing and confirming what it was that we pretty much already knew for ourselves. But what had happened was before our generation, my generation, my mother's generation, my grandmother's generation and then before that generation, there was there was evil that was put on all of the women within our family on that side of the family that they would have misfortune follow them regardless of how good they were regardless of how hard they were and regardless of no matter what the universe would bring them it would always kind of like backfire this actually happens a lot more than you guys would know or that you would even expect to think because back in the olden days that was pretty much you know I don't want to say that people were throwing magic around left and right but that was kind of like how things were done in a lot of ways. There's a lot of ritual that was done. Even even with Christian backgrounds, it was there's still a lot of evil words that were said and evil things that were done through words. So how do you know that a curse is on you? Well, like I said before, it just seems like everything seems to backfire. You could have success in all of these areas of your life, but there could be this one area that there is consistently a drought no matter how plentiful it would seem that the opportunities would be or how blessed or how lucky you should be, it just, things just seem to backfire. Or a lot of you guys intuitively kind of know or you have a vibe, or maybe you guys intuitively kind of feel this like dark cloud following you. Let's go ahead and talk about removing the curse, which to me is the most important part of this video. Now there are three different ways three of my favorite different ways that you can remove a curse or a hex that's been placed on your life, whether it was something lightly done in this life or something that was heavily done it towards you in this life or it's something that's passed from generation to generation. The first one is by using red brick dust. Now, this actually happens to be one of the easiest and cheapest forms of removing curses and I use this for blessing and removing bad juju, bad vibes from my house and from my home and from the environment around it. For those of you guys that don't know, I've moved a, I've moved so many times in my life, probably over 30 times in my life. I moved every year since the age nine and then multiple times, sometimes within one year. And each time we've been in a new home or I was in a new apartment or whatever the case was. And that home, if I walked into a home outside of staging it, if that home had bad vibes around it because there was a fight or a divorce or a death, 
I would use this in order to break the curse, in order to break the bad juju of that home, and then also to simultaneously bless me while I'm living in that space. The other way that this red brick dust can work in order to remove curses is to remove the energy that you bring to the home if you yourself or energy of your ancestors is carrying on with you now in the present and is infiltrating the energy of the home. And basically what you need is a hammer, you need a basic red brick, you need a broom that you don't mind throwing away, you need a bucket, and you need spring water. Red brick is so powerful when it comes to removing curses, believe it or not, and it's so easy to work with. But you, I do want to warn you guys and tell you to be careful with crushing the red brick, which is the first thing that, it is that you're going to need to do. What I like to do is I like to take newspaper or plastic and put it outside and start to crush the, a red brick with a hammer. Then you're gonna separate the red brick into two separate equal piles. The first pile of red brick dust, so you wanna put it, you wanna crush it so much that it actually turns into a powder. You're then gonna put that in a bucket of fresh spring water. It doesn't have to be a whole lot of water, it could just be one bottle of spring water that you can get anywhere from a dollar, from a vending machine, from Whole Foods, it doesn't matter. But make sure that you have fresh water, don't use tap water, and then pour it into the bucket and then add the red brick dust to the bucket. Then what you're going to do is take a rag or a mop and you are going to wipe down the floors and wipe down as much of the walls as you can. And while you're doing that, you're calling in your angels, you're calling in your guides and your ancestors to help to remove any bad vibes, to help to remove the curse and speak it out of your life. A lot of people choose to work with a mop, but I I, I don't like that method at all. I personally like to use a rag, a rough rag, because I can scrub the floor, I can scrub the walls, and it's just really, in my belief, I feel like it just completely removes the energy and I'm like simultaneously cleaning as I go along, but that's just me as a Virgo. I'm very thorough, and I feel like with a mop, you're just kind of coasting through and lightly brushing it over. Granted, just having the red brick dust and the water wiping throughout the home is enough in order to bless the home, but of course, again, Virgo, we always go above and beyond, so it is what it is. Just do whatever feels most comfortable for you. After you're done mopping down the walls and the floors, more importantly, the floors than the walls, you're gonna take the other half of the red brick dust and you are going to sprinkle it around the perimeter of the home. While you are sprinkling the dust, the red brick dust, around the perimeter of the home, make sure that the windows and the doors of the house are open. That way you're letting breezes come in, that way you're letting good energy come in because you've already called it in as you were mopping the floors down, as you were mopping the walls down, and working with your angels and guides in order to completely remove and bless the home and to reverse the energy of this curse that's been bringing misfortune and bad juju into the home itself. You can also use that same um, bucket of water that you use to mop the floors and that you use to mop the walls in order to bless certain objects. Let's say there's a ring that it is that you like to carry that it, it's connected to divorce or a death or an object that you that is connected to bad vibes, you can use that same red brick dust water in order to bless and to cleanse that object. And do the same thing that you would for the fl floor and the walls to bless and remove the curse from the home environment, but speak good over that object and call your angels, call your guides, call the divine, call God and your ancestors in order to reverse the energy of that object and start it fresh and start it brand new. For those of you guys who are like, Jess, does sage work? Sage does not work when it comes to curse reversal. There's a lot of people who will probably debate me on that, but in my opinion and from my experience when it comes to energy work and magic, there are curses out there that just sage alone is not going to work. Sage should work in conjunction with it, but using and believing that sage is going to completely remove a curse from your home and, or from you is not enough. Curses are so serious and they can be very dangerous. And more than that, they create so much discomfort and heartbreak and sadness within your life that I would never rely just on sage alone in order to reverse something that is so strong. This is why you really do need to take it to the next level and do these extra steps in order to protect yourself, your home, and your family. But anyway, so back to what it was that I was saying, you know, your windows are open, you have good vibes and good air and good breeze, you're working with the elements of the nature coming in and blessing your home as well as your angels and your guides, 
guys working to bless your home and the red brick dust is doing what it does in order to reverse and to remove the curse you have already sprinkled the dust around the perimeter of the home as much as you can then you go back in you take a broom that you don't mind throwing away after you're done using it and you sweep that red brick dust out of the house starting from the far end of the home and then moving it out the back door or the front door. If you live in an apartment and there's only one way in, one way out of your apartment, then just move it out of the door, that's fine too. But as you're doing that, thank your ancestors, thank your angels, thank, thank your guides, thank God, thank the divine for working with you to remove this curse and to lift this curse from your life. When you are done sweeping the red brick dust out and when you are done blessing the home, it is time now to throw away the broom and thank it for its service. Now, the next thing that I recommend, my curse removal number two, is to do a dragon's blood bath. Bath soaks are so powerful when it comes to working your magic, setting intention, and curse removals of all types. We see this being used many times, or the power of water being used many times in all different types of belief systems, in all types of spirituality, in all different types of religions, because water has the power to heal, to transform, to shift, to bubble up, to brew. We see this in baptisms, we see this in our tears, we see this in our body we see this in the pools of the ocean and the ebbs and the flows and water is so so powerful and I use it a lot when it comes to working my magic in a way that I am allowed to be flowing and more easy and more effortless but just because it's quote-unquote easy doesn't mean that it isn't powerful AF and that's why this is curse removal number two and again it's the dragon's blood bath so this right here is actual dragon's blood. Dragon's blood is essentially a powerful red res resin and the energy of this is so strong in building power in order to build energy but also in removing curses and bad vibes around you. So what you want to do is almost very similar to the red brick method that it was that I was talking about earlier. You want to take a chunk of dragon's blood and I feel like this is just enough and then you want to take a mortar and pestle. You want to add the dragon's blood to the bottom of the mortar and pestle and then crush it up into a fine powder just as you did with the red brick. Then you want to add two cups two full cups of Epsom salts. Me personally, I'm very overly generous with my Epsom salt because I believe that, and from my experience, salt and water together is a powerful form of baptism and detoxing that I always incorporate within my bath. And you guys see that with, with the charge soaks that it is that I offer within my shop, within the apothecary, they always incorporate different forms and variations of salt that you can add to your bath water that is charged in order to change the vibration, in order to change the magic, the essence of whatever it is that you're trying to call in, whatever it is that you're trying to do, whether it be protection, curse removal, attraction, love, beauty, whatever the case is. So then once your dragon's blood is crushed into a powder, you're going to add cinnamon, you're going to add drops of patchouli, you're going to add half a cup of papaya leaf. If you don't have papaya leaf around you, I have some of that within my apothecary. The links for that are down below. And then a sprinkle of black pepper. Now the reason why this combination is so powerful is because not only is it surging with energy, dragon's blood, cinnamon, black pepper, and black pepper are fire elements and they work to completely dissolve and transform anything in a way that is powerful and masculine. It's very assertive. Even though the bath itself is very feminine and releasing, this is what surges all of those energies together and those elements together in order to create incredible change quick and fast. It's very, very, very powerful. When you have these ingredients together, not only are they working to break the curse, but the act of you stepping into this charged and blessed bath soak, which I'll tell you about how to do that in a second, it works as a baptism in order to cleanse you new and cleanse you fresh. But then, more than that, it goes a step further and reverses the curse and bounces it back to whoever it was that gave it to you, whether they are presently alive or it's in spirit. So you have all of these ingredients together. I 
prefer mixing them up in a ceramic or glass bowl. They're smashed together, they're pushed together, and then you sprinkle them into the bath soak. When the ingredients are in the bath water, you want to sit at the edge of the tub and you want to call in, again, your angels, your guides, ancestors, the divine Archangel Michael is one of my favorite archangels to work with when it comes to curse removal. You want to ask them to bless your bath space, to make it the space sacred, to make it holy. You want to tell them your intention. My intention is for this bath soak and my intention for this moment, for this baptism, is to completely remove bad vibes off of me, to completely remove this curse, to break this curse for my highest and greatest good. I have freedom on me, I have abundance on me, I have love on me, peace and blessings flow to me now. This curse is completely removed. I ask angels and guides, I ask you Archangel Michael, I ask you divine, I ask you spirit, that you work with me now in order to bless this water. And as I step into this water, it is the old version of me. I'm gonna be baptized, born anew, and the curse is gonna be completely removed. So it is, so shall it be done. Ashe. When you're sitting in the bathtub, just allow yourself to float, to soak. There are many times when I have done this for myself, and I've done it a total of three times in my life for separate occasions. Two out of those three times while sitting in the tub, not only did I feel the release, the weight of it lifted off of me, but I actually felt an emotional release that I didn't even know that it was that I was carrying, but as I was soaking in the tub, and as I would come up from the tub water, and from this blessed soak, I actually felt this weight being lifted off of my shoulders that again, I had no idea that it was that I was carrying but that's exactly how curses work. You don't know the weight of the burden that it is that is on you or surrounding you until it has been lifted off and your spirit now is light. So you should feel that when you rise up from your bath water and when that happens, just go ahead and drain the bath bathtub water, drain that charged water. All of that needs to be washed away. And so afterwards, what you wanna do is you wanna turn on the faucet, clean the bathtub. You wanna shower and clean yourself and bathe yourself brand new. And then after all is said and done, use blessed holy water or Florida cologne water, which you can see here. Use Florida cologne water that is blessed and splash that on your body. Thank your guides, thank your angels, your ancestors, the divine, the God, Archangel Michael for working with you, bringing you back anew, and set intention for the type of love, the type of money, the type of life, the type of health that it is that you want to, uh, to have within your life and to attract and build, continue to build within your life because Chances are you have been trying, but this curse, this bad vibe has been the one thing that's been blocking those blessings for you. And now that the curse is lifted, this is when that energy can come come in. Because you have been baptized, because you have been blessed and come at, come out of this a totally new person or your spirit is totally new, I also want to see you vow to do better for yourself and to make healthier choices, to make healthier options, to think lighter, to think positive, to speak only good things and not ill things because even though the curse is removed, you yourself have become accustomed to negative circumstances and negative events. If you bring the energy of that negativity that you just released, even though that curse itself is gone, but your mindset is still toxic, your mindset is still stuck on negative situations and negative words and negative thinking, then you are going to allow that negativity to kind of linger even though the curse itself is gone. I hope that that makes sense. Now moving on to my final favorite way of curse and hex removal and this is one of the most powerful things that have worked for me. I don't want to go into too much detail of the circumstance that I needed this for within my life but uh, when I tell you guys it was so powerfully healing that I did write about it on my blog then I also created like an altar of sorts like an internet digital altar of sorts to Archangel Michael because the amount of profound healing that came to me from this moment and the one thing that I did promise after I did this spell or after I did this intention after I did this prayer was to share the word and you will also see the prayer for it down below. I'm gonna link it in my description box because I want everybody to have access to it. And I also want to encourage you to do this. And then once it's done, I want you to then pass it on to others and to continue to pass it on. This works without fail every single time and it literally transformed my life in ways that I didn't even think was ever going to happen at a point where I even doubted if it could ever be transformed. That's how miraculous this was. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna get a white candle, like a seven day candle. It doesn't have to be in a glass case. In fact, the first candle that it was that I used was a white pillar, like a white regular candle stick. 
and I just held it and I would just keep lighting it and I would have like a, a cup that it was that it would sit in but for seven weeks I would light this candle or if you want to use a glass candle I'm using this one right now as an example because this is what I just happen to have within my sacred space right now but it does have to be white or gold or silver but um, you light it every single day for seven I'm sorry you light it every single Tuesday for seven weeks and you say a, a specific series of prayers. Again, those are gonna be listed below. Within the prayer, there's a spot for you to ask for whatever it is that your intention is, for what it, whatever it is that you're asking from Archangel Michael or from your guides. And you wanna fill in the blank with that. When I tell you your blessings will be answered or your prayer will be answered and it will come to fruition, it really is a prayer of miracles. I'm so surprised and shocked that more people aren't talking about this because the effect of it is just so strong and so powerful and I have to recommend it to everybody as much as I can. Again, that's why I have a full page dedicated to this on my on my website. But again, what you do is you do this prayer every Tuesday. It doesn't have to be the, an exact time, but just can commit to doing this every Tuesday, lighting this candle and saying that prayer and it will revert, remove curses and it also will bless your life depending on whatever it is that you're asking for. Now, my story with that is this there was a major thing that it was that I was dealing with with in my life that I had been dealing with the majority of my life since I was a child and I didn't even know any better like I didn't know life to be different because this was all I knew it as and I was called to go to this sacred space that was in Tarpon Springs in Florida and that was where this shrine to Archangel Michael was created and you would go there and I remember going I remember looking around me um, the space was so quiet it was so still that it was almost eerie like it was almost really eerie and I remember walking in into the shrine it was beautiful and there were people there that were praying there were some that were crying but it was very light and I was thinking like these people are probably praying for miraculous healing they're probably praying for certain situations and certain circumstances and here I am praying about this one situation I don't know why I'm getting emotional right now talking about it but it just reminds me again of how desperate the situation was for me and and how much I had been hurting from this thing from this circumstance and how much healing I needed and then also looking at other people that were struggling and suffering within their own stuff I was guided to go there and my mom and I went together and I remember just praying and I remember praying and I remember feeling uncomfortable when I first started praying but then I just like lost track of time and I when I by the time I did open up my eyes everyone was gone even my mom wasn't there anymore like she was waiting for me outside I just I didn't hear anybody like I just was I was just praying to Archangel Michael and asking for a miracle over my life and um, and then during that process I had I learned while I was praying that if there is something that is heavy on your heart it's so imperative for you to pray about it it doesn't matter how trivial trivial you think it is if it's making your heart heavy then it's so important for you to ask for guidance and for you to ask to be released of it and that's exactly what it was that I did and now looking back at it I realized how important it was for me to get this off of my heart and how actually like large the magnitude of the burden that I was carrying was even in comparison to other people's issues but because I had gotten so used to it and I because I had gotten so accustomed to my life looking like this and being a certain way that I had just gotten used to carrying that burden and I feel like the universe God will put things on your heart um, and put things in your life in order to test your faith in order to put you in a position where you have to ask them for help so that you can actually receive miracles as a testament to what the universe and what you know the divine can do for you and to, and to help to spread that word and that message but either way you know I opened up my eyes finally when I was done talking to Archangel Michael and I looked around and there was nobody there and I remember being like oh it didn't work and then I walked out and you know but I had done my prayer so I walked out and I saw my mom waiting for me and as soon as I stepped on this on the, the front step of the shrine Literally, I felt this huge weight off of my shoulders. And I was like, oh my God, like, I've never, I've never felt that before. Like, I didn't realize that I was carrying this burden and this weight on my shoulders for so long. And then when I tell you guys, like, I went home and I would do that prayer seven weeks, even after I had felt that. And I never, like, I never had that, you know, same release afterwards, but I was consistent and I was faithful to that prayer. 
And when I tell you after the seven weeks, when there was, when I tell you there was miraculous healing when it comes to my situation and the energy of the person that it was that I was praying about and my relationship with that person, it was insane. And it honestly was a miracle. But that was a part of, you know, an aspect of this bad, well, it actually was a part of the curse that it was that I was talking about earlier that we had discovered. But it was creating so much heartache for me, and I didn't even realize it because I had gotten so used to carrying it. And that's how it is for some of you guys. So that's why it was so important to me. I'm sorry for getting emotional, but you guys know how I am sometimes. It's when I see other people suffering or when I see, I remember like my own, my own story and my own journey and stuff like that and just taking these steps and how quickly your life can change. I don't, again, I don't know why people aren't talking about this more often and why they're not sharing this prayer but again, it's people like, I guess, me and other people who do share it that this is why we're here. And if it can happen in my life, and I've used this multiple times, and each time at the very end of the prayer, um, there is miraculous healing. And I, I have to include it when it comes to curse removal in this video, but also don't just use it for curse removal. Use it for asking for the desires of your heart in areas that you may be lacking faith or you're not sure how things are gonna happen or how things are gonna manifest because it is a miracle and it will happen. And God, your angels, your Archangel Michael will speak to you. And when I tell you the power of Archangel Michael is so real, whether you believe it or whether you don't, and I hope that you do, but if you don't, still call and see what will happen because it will turn a non-believer into a believer real quick when that energy starts to shift and you start looking around and you're just like, damn, the only way that that could have happened is if it was through a miracle. And I just have like chills talking about it right now, but it's crazy because it doesn't really hurt me But right now, but it's just crazy um, how everything kind of worked out. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for <laughs> tuning in. I legit love every single one of you as if you were you know, my own. I hope that this video helped you. Um, if it did, go ahead and hit the thumbs up video. Make sure that you hit subscribe. Share this with the people that it is that you love, your friends, in order to give hope, in order to give healing. And until then, I send you all of my love and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.